We're back. We're back. We're back. Okay. I have to warn or I have to inform a couple of things. First thing. My head. My check is moving. Okay. First thing. In the previous series, I know, I forgot to switch on the sound. Somehow I recorded the whole thing and what happens is when I switched on the camera to record, I double clicked the, the sound and voila, no sound. But the sound was... Uh, Alright. This time, <laughs> now I'm getting fear. Uh, it's recording, that is recording. I'm gonna check. It's just fear, man. It is recording. So that's my, that, that is a fear. I'm getting worried that you just spent two hours and you haven't recorded. I, I need a screen to see what I'm recording. Um, a couple of things. What I did is I looked at, uh, you see my screen, so from lesson last, last lesson, I'm just gonna start this up. So the thing I noticed is the APIs I was recommending, A, they were slow. So I started playing around with it more. Um, it was slow and some of them did not come responding, um, had a course issue. So what I'm gonna do today is, so we started with employees. We have on a dashboard all our employees. I found a nice API, uh, which is called JSON Placeholder. Oh, I should have sneezed in one second. Actually, I can't show you what it is, but okay, where were we? You have to, All right? I found an API. <laughs> You sneeze and, and you would see in a couple of seconds my wife's coming running and spraying. Um, like we'll be playing uh, Battlefield 1942 or Counter Strike. She'll come out and then spraying the whole house. Right. Um, what I was talking about. I was talking about, yeah, this is Jason Placeholder. I found it. It's a pretty cool one. So um, it returns all you to posts and all the books, and then you can go exactly into a post, I think. Um, let's have a look here. I liked it because it had posts and then I can exactly see a post, which was cool. And um, you could also see comments and you can pass in the post ID and then you can see those comments for that post, which is amazing. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little refactoring. First thing I wanna do is so instead of, um, instead of, so the dashboard, so instead of having that restapi.com employees here, I'm going to replace that with posts and then we just quickly need to console log this out. Okay. And I'm just going to quickly have a look at the dashboard. I'm just going to click on the dashboard. Let's see what it loads for us. Uh huh. So that's straight away an object. We don't have to worry about any typos here. And it has a title and a body. So that's what we're gonna do. It has a title. So we're gonna take the title here. Instead of input item name, we're gonna put into title. That's cool. And then we're just gonna put the response into the data. Remove that. Instead of employees, I think we can call it posts. Set posts. Post here, post here. Boom, 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 boom. Set post, set post. Ah, oh, beautiful. It loads beautifully. Yeah, that was just an old bug. Beautiful, it loads. So it's very cool, this dashboard thing. Um, so we have a dashboard of all the posts. And what we want to do is, um, what is this lesson going to be about? I forgot the subject. I need to do this. Ah, there you go, that's better. So nested roots in Angular versus React.js. The whole point of this subject, this is a good reminder for me what I need to do. I can put that back away. Um, nested roots, so what does that mean? It is, so when you have posts and you want to access a child of it, so let's go, we can go here and go slash one. 
we want to grab the the identifier. Basically, when we click on an item, we want to pass the identifier to the URL. And so that when it loads here, it will load the page according. So it will grab the ID and then get that ID, which so hopefully is a number, and do an API call because as you can see here, if I do post and then I do slash one, it will request exactly that post. So that's what I want to get done on this part. Um, now that we have posts here, that's great. That's a dashboard page. We maybe want to get, we want to create a new feature um, that will be called uh, post.js. And same standard, you can either just go uh, into your dashboard to not write it, just copy the top part and copy the bottom part. Change this to post and change this to a post. And what you can just do is a, a return post. So we've got a post here. And now what you can do is in your layout, you have a layout for thing here. Uh, we know that we want to, uh, it's another, another route. So that we pass into a path will be house, sticky fingers can be post and then the ID of it and the IDs you can do a semi or these two dots I think they're, they're not semicolons they're called colons I don't know these two dots ID to identify or post ID you can call it and then it should be exact and then the components that you want to load which is post component and that post component you can just do copy this Hey, lazy fingers, time to work. Cool, so post, we got post and then we load it here. So that means if I just go post one, it's just gonna load me the post page. Now what I would like to do is quickly add some styling. The styling is not to do too much. What I want to do is I want to go into the dashboard, dashboard and I think in the, mm, no, I'll skip the styling right now. And we can then have a whole session of styling because it's just a few. I assume everybody knows CSS here. If not, I should create a whole different series of CSS. But what I'm trying to show is this, the dynamics of in the middle of it. And that would be um, post is loaded here. Refresh it. So there you go, there's a post loaded. This menu is a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit confusing. And what I want to do is I just want to create a little URL here. Actually, I should fix the menu that we have, but we have a double menu here. And I just had this as a template menu, so I'm just going to create it here to not confuse us. I'm going to create one LI. It's just easier to. And another LI here. And then I'm just going to wrap this quickly in div. So just close the hey, close the div here and then do a styling and now react to styling goes a little bit different. So let's do inline styling. Let's do a styling like this. Where's background color is gray and then nope, nope. Gray and then the height. Ooh. Height is 600 pixels. I think it's happy. And now what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to turn this into a light gray. There you go. So the post, you can see a little bit better. The post gets loaded here in the middle of the page. It's more easier to kind of understand. So if I do dashboard, you can see that this is the dynamic content that gets loaded. I'm just going to remove the height because it doesn't actually make much of a height difference now. So you can see this is where the body gets loaded, profile. And then if I go post dash one, the post loaded here, and this is the footer. It's easier to read, easier to a little bit understand. Um, I can do the same thing, just, just the sidebar. I'm just gonna add, wrap this right now here. And then, uh, uh, -pum -pum. I'm gonna make it a little ugly right now, I guess. What happened? What did I do wrong? Ah, we're going back. Just so it's a little bit, little bit understand. So this is the footer, 
I look the same color, that's why I want to change it to SESG. I think it's red. Oh, fantastic. Perfect. So you can see a little bit here that it changes and that's the footer. So what I want is back to the subject that I wanted to talk about. This is a little bit more so you can guys understand. I'm just gonna do it. So on a post, um, when there's a post ID, I want to load it in here in this co post component. Now in the post component, there's different ways of doing it. And what we're gonna do is we're still gonna use the use effect and we're gonna still use the use state. Now, what we want is use the same, we wanna create a post and then we wanna set post. And that will be our uh, set, not set it, use state. And the use state is just gonna be an object for now. I'm gonna double check on the slash one. So it's a user ID title body, and this is what it's gonna return back. We've got it there. Now the next thing is we want to um, have a use effect. Uh, we want to call it. And what we wanna do, we wanna fetch an API. And let's, that API will be this number one post. And then what we wanna do is, as it's a promise, we wanna get the response and, and get the response in a JSON. And then we want to get the res the actual the, the response of that. I'll just response dot p there. Let's not have duplicate shadow names. And we want to set post, and we want to set inside of our object. Now, if I look at this um, at this post, and you just console log out uh, post dot id. I think it's the id is the name of the channel. Ah, the title. It, it, it should have a look. So if I go to post, sla post slash, slash one, post is loaded here, but it's not loading the details. Let's look double, double look what the error is. If there is any error. No, there isn't. I'm just gonna quickly just do a console log and do the response here, just to check. Oi. And as you can see, it's calling it several times. Now, this is why it's calling it, is um, you need to change it in here. If you do a bracket like this, what happens when, the first time it, uh, when it renders the first time, it'll call it to get this data, and it won't call it several times. So here you can see it's only be called once. And we nicely have also the data. So previously it must have, have done something wrong or it was just keeps calling it and going into a leap. We don't need, we don't need to call it every second time something changes. Um, I'm just gonna do this, remove this bracket here. It's much more cleaner. So return a JSON and then set the post here and then you can see the title, post loaded. Here is the title and this is the title of the post. A little bit Latin, no worries about that. What's next? So we've got it. Now, but what we want to get is the ID. Our focus is actually to get this ID from top. And this is actually stored in, um, so in functional programming, functional programming, functional components, uh, it passes through the props. And if I get the props here, and console log out, console log out, it actually stores, uh, it's got many things in there. <laughs> props. There's a props. You've got the history, you've got the location, you've got going back and forward, and you've got a match. And this is where you've got the params, and one of the params that you want is a post ID. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can do props.match.params. Params.id. No, it's always not ID, it's post ID. See? Params post ID. Which will console log you out the ID, because you're accessing it, or you can directly get it from by here, specifying the match, and then the match will get the match params post ID, which should be at one. So if you put two, so basically the ID of the URL, if I put jumbo, oops, if I put jumbo, you'll get the jumbo. It's basically getting the ID by OSC pass here. So cool, so how do I access it? 
So you can do a cont uh, of the page ID and assign it. Now you need to pass in this page ID here, and then you have the access here. Now in ES6, you can do the back ticks, beautiful back ticks, and then you can have the dollar sign and you can assign it like this. So if I just refresh, Jumbo of course is not going to be there, but two will come out. Let's see the network if I'm calling it right. Two should be there. Maybe I've been calling it too much. Sorry. And this was so in previous, it was fetching too long. Return fetch. So it took quite a while to return back the data, but it returned it. He means the question, it keeps calling it too many times. So, um, great, so we got back and we got the title, we can get the body. So you can have also the title, if I just do a break here, a, oops, a break here, a DR here, and then I just do spam, no spam, oh no, just put but a P tag, and then do, body oh you don't like BRs I thought you like BRs I didn't break any of your rules what's wrong Closing brackets. It doesn't have to be a smaller B. That's kind of why you're being picky. It has to be a smaller B. Um, so, yeah, you've got the title, and if I just remove this and. And what I can do is. Remember, guys, every time I'm saving, I'm calling the API, so that must be upsetting the API. Too many calls, too many freebies. So there's a title. I had a body. It must be a body. Body. And what did I say? Ah, it's missing a Y. There you go. So it output me the post. So great. You've got a page, which let's have a look. You've got a page. Boom, boom, boom. I've got a dashboard. The list of the titles here. And now you want to create links. Well, I did show you in a previous lesson, in the default file, you've got the import browser router um, that you, you can basically set your links. You want to just can copy that one. I will write it from the heart as you wish. I already know where my kind of shortcut codes are. I don't have to repeat the same code. And then all I do is just take the link. And what I want to do is just wrap the link around it. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and then like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the batik saying, hey, give it the post and then item the dollar sign referencing the item that I'm passing in there dot ID and you've got a link now now you ask where did I get the ID from so when you request oh these are links that are also rendered for me beautifully when you go to posts you would see that each post object returns you got a user ID I user ID ID title and body and that is what I'm using the ID so when I click on it I'm just gonna close this off so when I click on this one it takes me to the title, or takes me to that ID, and then I get the ID and I render the page. Um, that's basically in React. That's basically it in React, as you call it. Um, you've got a route uh, post, the post ID that you're passing in here. You specify the component. You create a new component called post, and the post is only responsible for that post, exactly as here. Shame there's not a lot of data. Could have created more fun, but I can also load comments for this page. I think it would look cool and nice. But that's basically it in, a, in React. There's nothing more to that. Um, let's do, let's flip this. Whoop, whoop. Now in, um, now in React, let me just do down, good. Now in, Re I'm just gonna flip it. 
Now in Angular, it's a little bit different. So you have the dashboard. Now what you can do is, we can create the same thing. And what you can do is, okay, I'll start beginning. I think I ran too fast. In Angular, you have a routing module. In routing module, you specify the path, if you remember. And the way you specify a path with an ID is you do, um, so you're the same. I'm just gonna write, sorry, from the beginning. You do path. Now we've got post. And then the same semicolon, so slash, semicolon, ID. And then you specify the component that you want to load, and we haven't got that component yet. So we need to create a component. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a terminal, ng to generate, g for generate, or ng for the CLI, g for generate, and t for the component. And then what I want to do is I want to generate it in features. Yep. And I want to call it post. So that should ultimately do. Ah, it doesn't think I'm in the right folder, so just I'm gonna navigate to the right folder. Thinks I'm not in the right folder, so I'll just navigate to the right folder and then run the command. Let me just enlarge the screen a little bit so you can guys see it. Can I hold this up? Minus. Ooh, too big. Too big. Okay, beautiful. Okay, beautiful. Um, that's how I created a component and it updated my app module. So it nicely imported into my app module, the, the component. Now we're gonna take it out here and I'm gonna put it nicely in this one here. Cause I like them tight, nice and tidy here and keep this ng module clean. And in routing, what I'm gonna do is, so my component now is post component. I click enter and it imported in the top. So whenever I access post ID, let's go to our Angular app now. App routing 28, app routing, is it routing or is it app routing module? App routing module, yes, fine, what's wrong with it? On 28, ah, by accident, that's not problem. So if I go post and then slash five, it should load me that page, which is post works. Fantastic, it does it. Now on my dashboard page here, I'm not gonna quickly flip the endpoint. So if I go on services, employees, instead of having just dummy employees, I'm gonna literally load posts. The same way as last time as we did there. And on a dashboard, instead of employee name, I'm just gonna have title the same way. What was it? Maybe I'll, because employee name, the employee name, Did them, ah, because it was a response. I just need a response from the API. I don't want to specify the data property because there's no data property in this API response. And then you got, you got all the titles. You got all the titles. Now what you want is, well, we can do two ways. There's one way of doing it, um, getting the ID from the router. That's not a problem, let's do that. And then let's call the API. So we have a post component here, beautifully clean, tidy. And we can start with a variable. So a variable can be uh, public, it can be a post, and it's just gonna be an object. For now, we'll just put any. I think that's good. What we're gonna do here is, you need to access the, so you're gonna write private, root, and you're gonna do active, active, root, wonderful. I click enter and then import it correctly. And on ngunit, what I wanna do is go this root, root dot, params and then I want to subscribe to it and that will return me the so the object whatever is inside of the params and for now I just want console log it out to see the object it's returning me here. Beautiful. Okay let's go here right click object okay nice and the object's got an ID beautiful so all I need to do is just object ID and that to get me the, it gives me the ID of the router. So great, I got it somewhere close. So there's two ways of doing it now. What I can do is I can, the, the one of the simplest way is I can call a service, which is my employee service, um, employee service, just copy the name of the component or the service component and just do private, double the name, lower this one, import the service. And now that I've got the router, 
I know the ID, I can go this, employee service. Now, I get employees I don't need. I literally need to get post. That's my custom method in the service file. If I go to my service file and create a custom method or custom uh, function, it'll be get post. And I will do an HTTP call like last time in the employees. Instead of these, it should be posts now. So you can literally refactor this as well. But get post. And we know that it needs to have here an ID. Now you can do back ticks with this one. And that way I can allow me to nicely write dollar sign ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in an ID here into my get post. And this ID is going to get signed. And then I'm going to call the HTTP with the post ID. So get post and this get posts. So I'm going to rename it, refactor it a little bit the dashboard to be cleaner. And in my post, it was get post. You can see if I highlight it, it's waiting for the one string that I just said ID. And that is the object ID it's waiting for. And now I want to subscribe to it. And when I get response, I actually want to go to this post, which is this post here, and I want to sign the response. Now, the shortcut may be difficult to read, so what I can do is just open brackets, close brackets for the functionality, and then assign this post, assign response to this post. And I can go now into my HTML file, pre uh, the title tag, if you remember the pre, that makes it beautifully uh, prettified uh, response. I keep forgetting single or double brackets now in Angular. In Angular, single brackets, pipe, JSON to see what comes back from the post. Ooh, doesn't like something. Is it Angular double post now? I swear there was single post. I can't remember. Oh, it is double. What doesn't like? Aha, uh -huh, it doesn't have, because I'm trying to pass in a number that doesn't exist. So I just refresh it. Passing to, and you can see nicely that it returns me this user ID body. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, I like my things typed, so I'm gonna create my type here, which is gonna be number, is a number, string, and a string. Beautiful. So that's a type, which we got nothing empty. And then in post, instead of the JSON, I can put just put um, title. And it should output me the title nicely. There is a title beautifully. Um, I can remove this. Put it a little bit above. And then I can also put out the body. So nicely, I have the title or the title and the body. Um, I'm just gonna the these uh, headers puts on top of it. I'm just got I got an error here. So I got an error here. It's trying to load because the beginning when we load post, the post is empty before it does a call. So the easiest way we can do this is to not have the error. Just to show you the error. So the error was cannot read the property title of undefined because post. Uh, Variable is undefined at the beginning, and then when we do a call, we assign it. Oh, what is this here? And it's just saying that this response, what I can do is I can turn this interface into interface um, post nicely like that. Capital P. That is nicely like this, and then the response. Can be also typed nicely, so it doesn't whatever is there. So when it's firstly here, it's undefined, and then we assign it to do service call. What we're gonna do here is we're just gonna wrap this in a div, and we're gonna do the structural directories that we talked about in the last lesson. I do ng if. So if there is post, then only load me that div, and that should sort out my that should sort out the issue. There you go, beautifully. It sorted out nice and neat. It'd be nice to also had add the styling here. Uh, it's pretty simple in Angular. For now, I'll show you a little bit more. In our layout component default, we had the routers here, if you remember. Um, we can do that just quickly. URLs, URLIs, 
and then just put the dash of one in here and then just do another ally and put the dash put the other link here and then we could just tidy up the HTML it looks nice and easy like this um, the div you can write the inline style, inline style. anti white anti and then the footer I'm just going to do Nice. So it's kind of now if we refresh it, it gives us a little bit of understanding. So the dashboard is one thing, um, and then post two it loads the post, and then this is it would be nice to have a different colors. I think this is a little bit it's the same. F E F E. Yeah, it's fine. So you go there you go, that's body and there's a footer, and then if I go dashboard that changes and do it here. It'd be nice to have links here, what we're talking about in React. So, so how do you do that? So we have this, this loop thing that we loop through all the titles. And how do you do your links? It's a little bit easier in, uh, in Angular. They have a, a structural directive called router link. And then what you do is it's waiting for an array. Now, let's show you this. So this is how you wrap it. And here, each, each element is basically the folder path. So first one is going to be post and then second one what we actually want to do is after this slash here we want to pass in the item which is each item of employee list it's not employee list but it's uh, post dot id so i'm just going to change this to post list refactor it and post list here and post list here it's much more easier to read in the dashboard so every item in post list list um, get me the item ID and assign it to this post router link and router link will take care of it and it will dynamically create me these links here beautifully now if I click why is error? so if it was refreshing the angular okay so if I click on one of these it will go to post 1 and that will load the post 1 details if I go to this one post 17 it will load me post 17 details that's basically it. That's how you, I'm just going to delete this dashboard works, clean it up for you. And then there's menu. And then what would be nice to do is in the next session, I think, is to actually style it up more. So I like to have a header, um, the, the body on the left, actually the, the sidebar on the right, and then the footer nicely. I think styling is it's a big subject in React and in Angular. Um, in, as you saw in React, you, the styling in React is a little bit different. Where was it? Where did I do this, this hack from? See, they have a, this kind of, they create an object. You can actually create a const and then pass it in, in the style. Uh, whereas in Angular, you can just do um, this inline, what was it? You can do this inline CSS. To be honest, I don't follow the guidelines of styling as Angular does. I follow, there's another subject I want to create and open in this YouTube channel, is when you do styling, I use um, IT CSS, IT CSS. IT CSS is a whole different kind of mentality of building your CSS, uh, scalable, um, scalable and maintainable CSS architecture. Um, have a read this. This is a really, this is a really amazing article. Really good. And this one will teach about styling it. Why is it good? It's because you create your own small CSS library that's for your legacy applications and your future applications, um, and you can expand and build it more and more complicated. For a small app like this, I may not include it not explain how to build it but as we're building it into a bigger complex app i want to exp i want to explain how to build it now one thing i've struggled in this series is um, finding a good api endpoints and what this is video going to be about or the next following video is going to be about is actually creating uh, end end uh, endpoints now the service we're going to use is aws i'll show you how to create an um, api gateway how to create a small uh, endpoint that you can just call returns back the data and what I want to do is I want to mock some data on the back that basically I don't know, return some tables or some graphs and then show you how, well, not show you, basically turn this app from a simple app into a more complex app and then you can see the potential of, of structuring your CSS better, structuring your components better. But till then there's a lot of fur there's a lot to go to it. Right now it's just grasping around of routing, components, UI components, services, 
I'm very going very slow with these videos only for one reason and that reason is to explain to you clearly of simple stuff and then building on top. It's very easy to go and go, oh, this is, the, this is how everybody's doing it around and use the state management and maybe you'll never need the state management. So maybe it's a simple app, you never need it. Um, but, that's basic, but that's basically it. Now I didn't do an intro on this video because I'm going to kick in and just finish this off video as um, it was part of the previous video. But I'm Chris, I'm a JavaScript buddy. I create applications in Angular and in React. I've been having fun with both frameworks. I also now starting to tip into more into Vue. Uh, a lot of people say there's a big uh, beneficiary from the React and in Angular. I don't really want to see the difference. The contracts that I have mainly is React and Angular for the past, it's now almost eight years. I've been everywhere from Angular 1.1, 1.5, 1.6, 1 and all those headaches that was with it. And I really love the way it's progressed. Now, I like Angular as a structure application, and I like React as easier to walk around. It's for you to decide what you like, but it's for me to try to explain to you and show you the benefits, the pros and cons, and I hopefully this little channel grows into something bigger. Um, anyway, guys, thank you for visiting my little channel. Thank you for seeing it. Guys, don't forget to subscribe and like my channel. Um, I know all the difficulties out there in the world. Let's keep safe. And especially now that we have to be isolated from the world, it's great that, well, for me, it's, it's, for me, it's the same thing. I, I've been, most of the time I spent home. So now that the whole world is isolated, I have more friends that I can talk online, face to face, and uh, spend time with my families. And uh, weirdly, I've been doing coffees. Coffee online. Have you heard that? It's where you get six friends around and you drink coffee and you talk. But it's all on the same chat. It works. Anyway, guys, thank you for visiting my channel. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.